Okay, so we're looking at baseball. I think the idea is that I'm not coming off here, are I? So I can draw. All right, just roughly, this is the Make sure you're just perfect from now on. <laughs> What's the coordinates of this point, guys? One point two. Well, one point two. Are you gonna... you... That's <laughs> zero, one point two. So I'm going to laugh at each other. It's the... Zero, one point two. Um, what about the coordinates of the vertex? I don't know. 70, 70, 70, 70. Good. How do we know? In what we stated, yeah? We were just told. We were told so the ball reached the maximum height of 17 when it was approximately 70 meters away from Vernon. Okay. All right. And then, sorry, let's uh, what did then say the other point here we know is this is 142. Zero. Why, by the way, is the vertex at 70 when this end is at 142? Why isn't it at 71? Why isn't it at 71? No. Good. Good. What's happening here? This is actually going to come down further, and where would that be? That being negative one zero, right? Yeah. You are very right, but will it happen on Desmos? Yes. yes. Is it a point that I could use in a function to help me find the function? Okay. Yes. If it's an x-intercept, do I need to discount that part of the graph when I use it to model my real-life situation? No. Yes, because it doesn't make sense to have negative... Number it. This bit is not relevant to the problem, but we can use it to understand the shape of the curve now. Yeah? When we do functions and curves, we're not necessarily using all of it, we're only picking the bits we want. So this is the what axis. What axis is it? It's three of you. Four of you said y. So what did you say? Someone said height. Yes, this is the height axis, isn't it? Yeah. A bit picky, but we're doing a criterion D. Criterion D is about the relevant elements. This is not a y axis if you are not dealing in y's. What are we dealing in? We're dealing in height and distance, yeah? Right. What can I call this axis? Well, we've actually got x. Why have we got x? Because it's h of x in the question, isn't it? Now, this is then h of x axis, the height axis. Right. And we have used x. So h, we have to state is height, and x equals... distance travel. Okay. So what I've just done is I've stated my variables. I've stated what they are. You have to be able to do this. Right. Again, I've said this is super important because when you do um, go into whatever next level of maths you're going to do, whether it's DP or A levels or whatever it is you're going to do, um, when you do your projects and things, you'll have to do that. Okay.
Just ask, what's this called? The vertex. Okay, this is called x-axis intercept. Okay, what have we spent weeks working on? What about the lenticular? How do we find an x-intercept? Yeah, we can. We can use vertex form. We can use factorised form. We can use a calculator. The calculator is not actually going to help us this time because we're going backwards. All right. Now, we have a vertex and we have two x-axis intercepts. Right? What we want to do is find a function that fits the points that we have. All right, those one, two, three points. We're going to use the different forms of the equations, or well, one of them potentially, only one, whichever one suits you, all right, to try and figure out a function that would work for this. What one should we go with? Uh, vertex. Let's go with vertex. Why vertex? Because we have the vertex. Okay, let's try it. Before I write it, can you write down the general idea of what vertex form looks like generally without any numbers in it? So let's see this vertex form. What does vertex form look like? It's going to be h of x equals. What does vertex form of uh, a quadratic look like? Oh, well, just to know, I think we actually had x minus something. Should we say h? Different h in this case, though. So maybe I should change that to uh, p. You often see that. X minus p squared plus q. All right. Remember that? What was the vertex in my question? So the x coordinate is, and the h coordinate is, okay, how can I apply that to vertex form? Yeah? H equals x minus seven. How do I know it's that? Just, we know, yeah, the vertex of the formula is that's how we get it, right? That's why vertex form is really easy. Let's just see them. Get your computers out, stick it into Desmos. How does that work? Does it work all right? Do you think? Have a go. Be really easy though, wouldn't it? If it was that, let's see whether that works this. We have initially come up with a function purely on the most simplest version of vertex form because we've used our knowledge that how the vertex form fits with the vertex. That's why we talked about it a lot. But you have discovered that when you graph it, it's just wrong. It's the wrong way up. The vertex is at 70, 17. So we've got something right. Now here's the thing. There is a coefficient missing that we have dealt with, but not in this sense yet. It's made it a harder version of vertex. 
Okay, but that involves another parameter. What parameter have we missed on our vertex form? The A. Where does the A go? Before here, then. There should be an A times that. Do you remember when we had to take out a factor of two out or something? Work out vertex form and then put the two back in? The ones that lots of people struggle with? Well, that's there. And we have to consider that. So, what have we got so far? Well, we only dealt with the P and Q. So we now, currently, we need to improve it. So we've got H equals A times X minus 70. Did that A ever impact where the vertex was? No, it didn't, did it? That's why we did all this work, right? The A does not impact where the vertex is. What did the A do? Control where there is positive. Uh, concave up, three one. Concave up, concave down. So in this case, it needs to be a negative A. That gives us that way. But it also did something else. One of the first things we looked at with the AX square plus bit, what, what did we look at? If it's closer to zero, then it's skinnier. Than concave. Other way around. Do you remember that? When we had A as a number decimal close to zero, it was actually a wider parabola. And when we had like 2x squared, it was narrow, right? Okay. Let's see if we can figure out what this A. We've already got it needs to be negative. Now, where did I get my information from so far? Well, I used the vertex. Is there any other piece of information that I can use? Well, we've got two actually. We've got this one and we've got this one. Now that's a second or third piece of information. In fact, we've even got a fourth piece of information. I have the formula to make it correct. Well, let's go through the process. I am going to use this point here. Is this point quite an important one? Yeah? So I'm going to put that into my equation and see how it works. So I'm going to use the coordinates, right? 0, 1.2. So what, up here, look, I had x is 70, h is 17. What does that mean here? x is 0, h is 1.2. Those of you that have done it through trial and error, can I have you pay attention? You haven't done it, because if you do what you just did, trial and error, in your Criterion D assessment, you, you, no, not long time, you get no marks. There is no credit for trial and erroring it. None at all. All right? You could have the correct answer, but if you've not got any working to show how you got there, nothing. So what we're going to do is we've used one of those points that we had on the graph, which was 70, 17. We are now going to use a second point, which I've chosen this one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these values into here. I'm now going to write it as 1.2 equals negative A times what's 0 minus 70. Well, I'm just going to write 0 minus 70 squared plus 17, what does that give me? 1.2 is negative A times <laughs> negative 70 squared. 0 minus 17, negative 70 squared, plus 17. You're all with me at the moment. What do I do next? Square it, so this gives me 1.2 equals negative A times... Seventy negative six is a positive number, right? Plus seventeen. Okay, so I've now got one point two equals negative four thousand nine hundred a plus seventeen. And what am I trying to find? A. Okay, how do we go about it? I didn't. Minus the 17, that's minus the 17. All this skills that you've been doing with your algebra are coming into play now. 
1.2 minus 17 is negative 1.2 subtract 17. Negative 15.8 equals negative 4,900. A. Divide that. So 15.8 divided by negative 4,900. Did I put too many zeros over there? That should be A. What have we got A as? Turn that out for me. So right, everyone else will do it, Sammy. Don't worry about it, Sammy. Everyone else is going to do it for you. Is that what you're leaving about? Have you got an answer for me? Yeah. What have we got? 0 0.0032. 0 0.0032. 0 .0032. Like that. Cool. Okay, so we potentially think that H of X is going to be negative 0 0.00322 x minus 70 squared plus 17. Hey? Yeah. I got it. So we got this, this number's wrong. Is that what you said? No, it's right. I got it. Oh, I, I wrote it wrong, yeah. Okay, so you put that into your graph. Did we get yes. a reasonable approximation? Yes. But are there still issues? All right, which numbers are correct? Well, the two that we used, there's the 1.2 height when he hits it, and the vertex. Why are the other, why is the end point not quite right? It's one. Six. What? One four two point. One, four, two, so slightly off. Why do you think that's the point that's slightly off when the other two are exactly correct? It's actually quite obvious when you think about what we've just done. Ben? Nothing to do with what mathematics we've done. Why do you think it's just the diameter of the hole? No, but why, why is this number at the end, why is that one was slightly off, but the other two we were looking at perfectly on? Like, if you think about it, right, this is good, this is great, this one, yeah, I mean, I'm happy enough, but it's not quite. Why is it that one that's slightly off? It could be used for those two. Yes, exactly that. We used the other two, so they should be right, yeah? The other one, we didn't use it. It's always going to be a bit of approximation. Do you think there's a way we could do it a different way where we would get exactly the other ones and approximate the vertex? Potentially. Well, let's not do all of it. Let's just use one of the other four, but you're getting the idea now. We could. What could we use instead of vertex for? Well, we've got, we can't use the quadratic formula because the quadratic formula only gives us the solutions. We have the solutions. We could use factorised form, couldn't we? Should we try factorised form instead? Yeah? All right, let's try factorised form instead. Um, in fact, do you want to have a go at factorised form without me doing it? No, I'm, I'm, I'm just aware I'm talking a lot and a lot of people are just sat there vague, vaguely looking like they have no idea. Are we all good? Yeah? All right, well, let's just start with, we had a graph, cross is at positive 142 and negative 1. Yeah? I was thinking of the, right, yeah. 
All right. How do I write factorized form then? Is it those two numbers? It's going to be x plus. It's not going to be plus 142, it's actually plus 1 and x minus 142. Remember, it's the oh. opposites. Yeah. Is that going to give me the correct answer? Well, obviously not, because we haven't included the a value in there. And the a value we know is going to be a negative. Yeah? All right. So this is what we think so far. How do we work out the minus a? But I tell you what, I'm going to ask you to do it in two different groups, right? We have used those two points, and we have two other points left over to try and work out what A is. Let's do it differently and see who gets the best answer. So what was this value up here? 17, 17 and this point was one, uh, 0, 1 0.2, wasn't it? Okay. I want U4 and U4 to use this point here, and U5 are going to use 7017. <laughs> okay. They might rely on you, Matthew. They've not had a good lesson so far. So. 